So um, let me just quickly introduce you. Okay, interesting. Okay, next speaker is Charles Papon, who's a regular at All Um known for VexFrisk 5 and, oh, and uh, Spinal HDL. Um, yes, so the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, ah, it's coming back. So, okay, this talk will be about doing a live demo um, where I will. Uh, on the SPGA dev kit, run VEX2 with 5 um, and boot Debian on it. So it will be really a live demo of how, how fast you can go on SPGA, how it behaves, and just need to plug the audio. No, uh, this is wrong. No, this is right. So. And so, yeah, on the system here is a quad core, a VEX to RISC V. Project started in November last year. Okay, let's switch the screen. Trying to get duplicated so I can see what I can do. Oh. Not duplicated. Okay, now we're good. Okay, okay, okay. So I will start OBS. So, okay, here what you can see is the HDMI output of the FPGA dev board. Here is a serial uh, port of the SPGA dev board, which is just there, I will show it later. And so I will now uh, start it. Okay, so now it's in LaTeX, uh, getting the Linux image from the SD card. Now it's booting uh, Debian, uh, Linux. So now it's booting Debian itself, so it, now it's uh, going through systemd. It will take a bit of time, so I will go full screen. Yeah, it is FPGA, FPGA booting Debian. So yeah, it is a quad core, VEX to RISC-V, uh, running at 200 megahertz. Um, there is SD card for the file system on which uh, Debian is now booting. There is USB host support, which is really great. Like this mouse, this keyboard are plugged on the USB of the FPGA dev board. Uh, there is HDMI output. Uh, so there is also a, quite a bit of L2 cache to get things faster. I will talk about all the details, I mean, not all the details of the SOC a, a bit later when I have the slides running. So, okay, we are logged, we are in, so I will, um, oh yeah, I need to power on the keyboard and the mouse. Okay, let's log in. So it take a bit more time to log in because it's Debian, it has to go to two system D, uh, quite a bit of overhead. And to go in, okay, we are in. So let me start uh, X11. So I, I run everything by hand. Uh, it's not automated, it's just to keep full control because this is a system I use for dev. I don't want things to come out uh, when it boots directly. I want to do things manually. So we can see my mouse, the terminal. So let's start uh, at desktop manager. Okay, so here, how smooth this is. This is our software running it. <laughs> so, uh, let's start. Um, uh, uh, XTERM. Yeah, let's start a few widgets just to get things a bit blinking. Uh, widget. So, one, one good one is this one, which show every CPU usage. Uh, then let's start HTOP. So here are all the four calls. I will run another terminal to do uh, NeoFetch. So what you can see, yeah, we are running Debian here. 
And the first yeah, thing now to try is, uh, can it run Doom? I will just run it with, run it with no sound because uh, the way Qcali Doom handles sound is a bit, with a bit of overhead, so let's go without it. Oh, I started it uh, in the wrong folder. This one. Okay, here we go. The share one. And yeah, it like a bit of sound, so let's let's go for a bit of sound. So here, um, it's it's frame capped, basically 35 frames per second, frame capped. You can see, you can do only use 60% of one CPU, MP3 decoding 20% of one CPU. So system is very not stressed. So let's stress it a bit more with uh, playing a video. So here it's okay, and player. Um, this video is encoded in 264, so a really properly encoded video with AAC audio. Take a bit of time to load now because it has to load a lot of shared objects. M player uses a lot of shared objects, shared library, uh, has to load in. That, that taking a bit of time. And this is all in software? No all in software, no GPU. Yeah. All done by the software. Uh, and yeah, and, and it's real time, 25 frames per second. Uh, the sound normally stay in sync. Now it's in sync. So okay, moving on. Uh, this I will quit. Yes. I don't know why it does. It's blinking, but probably a software issue. Um, Quake. So Quake is very much a different beast than Doom to run because. Uh, it has full uh, camera control. I mean, in, in Doom, you can look, look only left and right, so you can do a lot of software optimization to get things uh, running faster. But Quake, you can look everywhere, up, down, left, right, so it's a much more heavier task to run. At this time, I'm running it with a sound. Oh, 100%. It's uh, one core, 100%. And maybe a bit of X11 on the side, but not that much. Uh, so yeah, that's it for the demo. Now uh, let's start the slide. <laughs> so just maximizing it. And full screen. So, uh, oh yeah, that's this another mouse. So that's the dev kit it's running on. Uh, it's a FNX dev kit with a Titanium family FPGA. So to help you compare with something a bit more known like a Arctic 7, so it's much faster than an Arctic 7 while being, I would say, much cheaper. So interesting FPGAs. And here um, is a GitHub issue I open, like if you are interested about how to deploy this kind of demo on the FPGA dev board. Uh, I will put resources here, you can ask questions as well. Um, the only thing which you cannot buy online is the P mode, USB P mode here. Uh, but there is resources online, there is a PCB files for that. So the SOC here, Quad core VEX to RISC V at 200 megahertz. Uh, because we run Debian, we have to, to get a lot of RISC V extension up and running. We need 64 bit support, uh, atomic, we need uh, FPU, double precision point FPU, compression instruction set. So it's not a lightweight config. Uh, each CPU is configured to be in order, a uh, single issue. There is a store buffer, there is proper branch prediction, but one thing which differentiates VEX2 quite a bit from normal software is that it can do hardware prefetching. 
in a true sense, uh, the instruction cache and the data cache can work uh, uh, in a non-blocking manner. That means instruction cache and data cache can work on multiple outstanding memory refill uh, line at the same time without blocking the CPU, if the CPU don't need them yet. Um, there is a big chunky L2 cache, 500 to 12 kilobyte because the dev kit was big enough. Uh, one interesting aspect of all of this memory interconnect is, okay, yeah, it is memory coherent with HDMI, with SD card controller, the USB OS controller. Uh, it's all done through tiling on a 128-bit bus. Uh, L2 cache also work out of order in a non-blocking manner. And so, this is a mixture of Spinal GL and Litex uh, user written code. CPUs, L2 cache, memory interconnect, a few peripherals are in Spinal GL, while Litex has a few other peripherals and handle um, the integration with FNX tool. All of these generate some Verilog and goes to, into a regular flow then. Here is the uh, uh, resource usage of this SOC. It's a bit un uh, below 100,000 lockup table uh, for input lockup table, so don't compare that directly with an Attic 7. Uh, so it's big, but keep in mind that's mostly, mostly due to Debian requirements. If you go down to something more uh, software friendly like build root, you don't need 64 bit, you don't need the FPU, it goes much smaller. Uh, about the feature set of VEX to Risk V, in addition of all what I said before, uh, it can be optionally configured to support multi issue execution, so dual issue. Uh, somebody on GitHub tried quad issue, it worked apparently. Um, and it also optionally supports having a, for instance, an early ELU and a late ELU. That's, and, and if you turn everything on, uh, it's not something I really recommend to do on FPGA, but maybe on ASIC one day. Currently, if you turn everything on, you can get some quite good Cormac and Drystone numbers, but keep in mind, Cormac and Drystone numbers, uh, are, they are bad benchmark in the way that they only test a very small subset of the CPU behavior. They don't test anything about the memory system because they fit in the L1 cache, so keep that in mind. And um, a few words about the hardware description because VEX2 was uh, implemented partly because uh, as a replacement, three, four? Three minutes. Three minutes, yeah. VEX2 was implemented uh, mostly as a replacement for VEX1, but it was also implemented as a way to get a ride of all the technical depth and try to push a bit further how things were implemented uh, by the humans. And I love that that revolves around the idea that, for instance, uh, you have a pipelining API, uh, like if you want to do this kind of things, you want to inject some signal in a pipeline, like a PC, and get it back later on. Uh, it's it's two, li two lines of code. You don't, you don't need to pipeline things by hand. So it's nice because you have to write less code, but it's even nicer because it allows you to do design space exploration very easily, uh, painful, without much pain, uh, with much less hand-written bugs, potentially. Um, it's also based around the concept of plugins. So this goes really much against uh, the regular fat top-level Verilog where you have hundreds, uh, thousands, tens of thousands line of code. The idea here is that top-level of X2 is is mostly empty shell, and then you add plugins in it, and those plugins are self-aware, kind of. Uh, they are capable to integrate themselves into the CPU. You don't have to bind them manually. They are capable to negotiate with each other their needs. They are capable to ask, uh, please, PC plugin, give me a interface for me to change the program counter because I'm the branch plugin. They can communicate with each other at liberation time. And one big departure uh, compared to VX1 is that during liberation time, there is a full module, full model, uh, software model of what, how behave each instruction implementation in the pipeline. Like for instance, if you ever add an instruction, you can ask at elaboration time, at which stage this instruction is considered as completed. Or uh, until uh, which stage that add instruction may flush the pipeline. Or uh, from which stage, me pipeline, I'm not allowed to flush this instruction because this instruction may have produced side effect which cannot be revert. So we need to, well, to, to handle uh, precise trap handling, for instance, and quite a few other things, and then all those information at liberation time is then compiled together to generate a proper 
uh, instruction scheduler and a few other things. Um, and yeah, that's it. And if you're interested, it's all open source on GitHub uh, up here. Also, contribution are welcome. And that's it. Thank you. Do we have questions? I always do, but Julius, how do you? <laughs> Any other questions? <coughs> Christian has a question too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Again, all right. Um, so I always understood that the Vex risks the one was already plugin based, but yeah. this one is also plugin. Is there? This one goes even much more deeper uh, in the way that pipelines themselves become plugins uh, in the way that you have now the concept of elaboration threads. You have elaboration threads, and the elaboration of the CPU is done in some ways out of order. Okay. Like you can. Schedule threads, which will do phase. I mean, it's a bit complicated to explain like this in, one, in a few words, but it, it goes much deeper. Vex one was based on callbacks. You have one callback, uh, negotiate one callback, build yourself. Yeah. Vex two, use threads to do that. So, so what what for you was the 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 drop that overflowed the bucket that basically said, no, I I want to do Vex two Yo. risk. Yeah, <laughs> so mainly it was one project where, when I had to interface our LPDDR four. And LPDDR4 have one characteristic that they are really not friendly with masked writes. Masked writes and LPDDR4 is like four times less fast. And VEX1 is write true and one cache. I wanted to move uh, toward a, a, a write back and one cache. That's probably the main trigger. Right. Amazing demo. Um, I think we've had Doom at OR-Conf before, but certainly not Quake, right? So thank you for. Making that the first. Um, I had to compile it on the, on the board itself. Oh, wow. There was no Debian package. How long did that take? 30 minutes. That's not so bad. That's 330 uh, object file. Very file. impressive. And congratulations on zero demo, demo fail as well. That's uh, <laughs> quite an achievement. Um, I, I noticed you mentioned that you ran all, you've, in this build, it's all in order cores. Yes. What performance boost do you get if you, like, is it noticeable if you turn on the out of order or, sorry, multi issue rather? So, out of order is not supported for this one, but I would expect with Nexus 5. Uh, it's about, depends, like, the, the, the hardware prefetching really help VEX 1, yeah. getting rid of the, uh, VEX 2, VEX 2, getting rid of the memory latency. But with out of order, you, like, compared to Nex, maybe you, you earn, like, between 30 up to 50%, really depend. Uh, but you don't get the same uh, frequency. So it, and multi-issue, it really depends. If you are capable, if, if the code base you run is kind of optimized for multi-issue, you can go two times faster, but most of the time it's more like maybe 15%, yeah, right. 20%, not that much. Marginal, improved. yeah. Okay. And what's next? What, what, what are you going to do after this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have things to polish a bit there and there. Yeah. Uh, and then maybe I'm thinking about GPU. Oh, yeah. GPU? Yeah, maybe. Nice. I don't know. It's a bit scary with the software side of things. Yeah. <laughs> so if I remember correctly, uh, Phoenix uses Vex Risk Five as their official Risk Five offering, right? Yes. So have they put in stuff in there that makes Vex Risk go faster? To get Vex One faster, is no, there something? Do, are you talking to the Phoenix guys? And, so that they are adding stuff team? inside FPGA to make the Vex Risk even better? Ah. Mm. Not really. I told them, like, I really like distributed memory. They don't have that. But mostly, you know, VEX2 was made in a way that it could fit well in, for instance, FNX FPGA. They don't, it doesn't use uh, distributed memory. It's more like ad I adapted to this kind of FPGA uh, than the other, other way. One thing which is a big issue is maybe the block RAM. Uh, often, when you implement CPUs, you waste a lot of the block RAM because they don't have the right aspect ratio. Maybe that would be the one thing that is sometimes a bit. Okay, I thank Charles again. Thank you very much. <laughs>